Hey. <laughs> Hi, Sean. Hi, Brandon. Hey. <laughs> can you can. Can't hear you. You're hey. Uh, Sean is connecting. Hi, Keith. Stop it. Keith, you got your. Uh, you got your. Yeah, there you go. Hi, Sean. I can hear you. I can hear yeah, you. I'm, I'm, God, I'm actually in two meetings right now. Oh, you are. So I'm gonna have to mute back and forth. Okay. Okay. So if I mute, that's no, because I'm talking to the other okay. guys. No problem. No problem. Yeah. Okay. More guys coming in. Hey Jeff. Hi Jeff. It's also Jeff, Al. Sean, Brandon. Hello. Taking a uh, roll right now. Okay. All right. Play. So um Pat, Pat, yeah. Keith. So hold on. I'm gonna mute this. Oh, Pat. So when when you're when you're done recording, yes. So um, just send me the link, and I'll send okay. it out to everybody. Okay. You're gonna record the class meeting. Yeah, we're recording it now, actually. Okay. Yeah, it's it's being recorded. <laughs> well, Troy's here. Troy's here. Where's Troy? Oh. There's Troy. He's connecting his audio. <laughs> Got eight people here. Who else are we missing? <laughs> I think on. Jenner said he was trying to um, start up his computer. Who? Jenner. I tried, oh, I was, Jenner. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm wondering because I tried to get in at exactly five, so I was wondering oh, if you guys were going to run behind or on time. Right. Well, I, I came in earlier, but it didn't it didn't pick anything up, so I logged in to my uh, oh, hold on. Okay. Yeah, Pat. Pat, if you sign, if you set the meeting for five o'clock, you can't log in too early. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah, so if you set it for four forty-five, and then right. oh, okay, it would let you log in a little earlier. I see. Yeah. Hey, Troy. Hey, uh, Troy. Troy. Hello. Oh, I hear Troy now. Oh, Jenner's here. Come on in, Jenner. Yeah, there he is. Cool. Hey, you guys, do you guys all have the book? Everybody has the book. The level, level four book. book. Yeah, level four. Everybody got it? Okay, good. You know why? Because... Somebody hasn't picked theirs up. I mean, at least at least two people have not. Trying to figure out who it is. <laughs> I got mine. I got mine. Okay, good, good. No, just you know, trying to make sure. Hi, Jenner. <laughs> oh, who is this? Oh, there you go. Gavin. Gavin's coming in. All right, Gavin. And whoever this is. Hi. Who's this? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, oh. Jenner. Jenner. Oh, that's pretty good. Jenner. Jenner, you need a haircut. Huh? You need a haircut. Oh. Oh, haircut. <laughs> What you do? Right. I wonder who this is. Ah, uh, you, Mir. Oh, Mir. Mir. <laughs> 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 One, two, three, four, oh, there's Gavin. 
Hi, no stop that. All right. Yeah, uh, happy belated Father's Day to Thank everybody you. who's that. Same yeah. to everybody. Happy Father's Day. Day. Who, who, who are we missing? Who are we missing? Mike. Three, four. Mike. We're missing Mike. Ronell. Ronell. Oh, yeah. yeah. I talked to Ronell today. He said he was going to be on. John, John. Oh, yeah. John. 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 Carlo. Carlo. Oh, yeah. There you go. And Carlo. Yeah. Where's Carlo? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That, those, that's everybody right there. Yep. That's everybody. That's the other. That's the other five. Yep. Nine, ten. Jenner's got help. <laughs> oh, how can we change the background? I want the American flag. Virtual. <laughs> yeah, when you're setting. Yeah. Yeah, click the bottom one. Say stop, vi uh, stop video. Click on that arrow. It says choose. Virtual background. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, bottom, yeah. bottom left. Yeah. Oh shit! I just knocked myself out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sean knocked yeah. himself out. Change right, your background. I can see. I can see. We lost somebody. One, two, three, four. Ah, I don't know. Oh, shit. We lost. Uh, lost me? Oh, no, I got you. <laughs> I see Sean screen, but no. Lost the? Gavin. Lost Gavin. <laughs> Oh. Is that Brandon? Brandon's at the top. Oh my God. You grow your hair on your chin already. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> oh, Troy. <laughs> Exit minimize video. Okay. Anybody go back to work again? Yeah, I went back work. Oh, good for you. I'm working at my in-laws. Working. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> oh, what happened? Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> He's got a virtual background. Yeah, I just leave it off. <laughs> Oh, oh, we we, we missed a bunch. We, lo we lost a bunch of people. Yeah, Gavin's coming back. There you go. There's Gavin. There's Sean. Yeah. Sean's yeah. here. Oh. Can you guys see this PowerPoint? Nope. No? Well, sure. Can you see it now? No. no. Are you clicking share screen? I have shared screen on. Let's see. Let me see. Share screen. I know I had it on here. Let's see. <laughs> Mute. Pause. Stop recording. Close. Everybody. I had it on my settings. Meeting. View. Show chat. You're in the bottom. The green button says share screen. Yeah. It's on. It's on. Oh. Oh, now I clicked to some. Oh. I had to click to this. There. Oh, right there, right there. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Oop. How about now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, screen sharing. Oh, I figured that out now. So we got 11 people here. Like, 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 like. 
Well, anybody question? Anybody have any questions about treatment, water treatment, before I start review? Not really. Okay. Like Brandon's muted. Yeah, I just mute it so when you talk, I don't right. Pick up. right, right. No problem. Uh, Pat. Yes. I'm going to try to um, log back in on, on my laptop this way because I got on a laptop, but I have to download something else. Gavin. Like, yeah, but I'll okay. on my phone. But, okay. Uh, no, problem. Right, I, 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 no problem. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> so you guys, you guys did the water. You did the, did the four first four sections, right? You guys completed with those, correct? Yeah, yeah. And you guys did the exam on each one or the quizzes that Keith sent you. And all right, we're going to talk a little bit about water chemistry. Um, like in HVAC systems. Okay. And basically you're going <clears> to, <throat> we're going to go over all these topics. These try problems. Uh, A, properties of water relate to water treatment. Identify water problem, quality problems. Describe how water tests are used and state the common safety precautions. Okay. Uh, we're not going to do this right now, but uh, how many of you guys, how many of you guys use water test kits? Everybody? Probably not the janitorial guys. The same one as the pool water? Same one as what? The pool water. Yes. That's a test uh, kit. Yeah. Uh, pool water yeah. is a test kit. Correct. Because you have different test kits, right? You have test kits for pool water. You have test kits for for um, HVAC systems, like uh, cooling towers. Um. Uh, basically, most of them are P. Wow, we lost some people. How many? There's ten here. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, basically, a pH meter and a conductivity meter. So those are the. Hey. Okay. And then they talked about these things here. These these office building for next day, 2012. State President of Michigan, what three things, what, what, what was common with this was uh, Legionnaire's disease, right? The Philadelphia one was actually a VFW, Veteran Foreign Wars um, convention, and the VFW guys got sick. So we'll talk a little bit about water. Water. pH of water goes from zero to fourteen. Seven being neutral, a very neutral pH. Um, and then you got below seven is acid. Oh, sorry. Below seven is acid, and above seven is alkaline. <clears throat> so either one, either end of scale is really, really bad for you. So you don't want, uh, and this talks about hardness, water hardness. This is hardness as far as uh, the this, this dissolved solids in water. Zero to 60 is soft water. That's where you uh, usually have water softness, get, get it down to that level. Then you got moderately hard, hard, and very hard. Hawaii has a lot of silicates, right? So it's, uh, on the mainland, it's a lot of calcium. Hawaii is more silicon, and and what and the reason why they have that silicone silicon is because of um, volcanic activity. So that's why <laughs> Hawaii has a lot a big problem with silicon. And what's a you guys know a problem with silicon and chillers? What happens to silicon? Uh, Jeff? Hmm? Silica and chillers? Oh. Uh, Bad heat transfer? 
it, it messes up heat transfer, right? Because uh, yeah, if you have a really high, if you have a really high um, suspended solids and a lot of silica, it'll plate out in the hot condenser tubes and make a real fine uh, scale, and it, it's almost like a glass uh, on the inner tubes. And it really, really affects. It's like it's like trying to transfer heat through glass, and that doesn't do it very well, right? So. So that's that's what we're punching chillers for the silica. Silica, yeah, and, and a little bit of calcium because there's some calcium in the water too. Oh. And you're also getting some scale out, uh, biological growth, things like that. Mm. So. These these four things: corrosion, scale formation, biological growth, suspended solid. That's a big problem in air conditioning plants because it affects heat transfer, right? Mm -hmm. And then the next thing is corrosion. Okay, wears away your metal surfaces, can be exter internal or external. Um, uh, I don't have a picture. I wish I had a picture of my uh, piping at Topa, my building. We actually had a lot of external <laughs> corrosion when the we had a uh, old fiberglass insulation and it was wet for a long period of time and it was actually corroding the pipes from the outside in <laughs> so if you look at the pipe the inside of the pipe is perfectly clean from the chill water treatment but then the outside of the chill water pipe is all corroded from the uh, uh, corrosion the galvanic corrosion that was happening <laughs> Because they were sitting in water all the time, that and we have black pipes. That's why. So that's why it says corrosion can be internal or external. Here on the second, the second thing here, mm. it's called by acid, oxygen, other gases. Uh, so that's one thing you gotta you gotta watch is insulation. Make sure insulation's not wet on your air conditioning plant. Okay. And look at these different. Uh, uh, percentage of scale buildup on piping. If it's any of these um, from one thirty second to one fourth, look at the big difference in percentage of energy consumption you're using. So that's not good. Uh, I have some other pictures here. Hold on. I want to show you guys something. Let's see here. Took out some. I want to show you guys this. Oops. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you look at these different, these are cooling towers. I actually, I actually went to a building one time and see the, this is the fins where the water runs down. Can you imagine how, how less the heat transfer That's, is when it's flopped? Like uh, we can't <laughs> see it. Yeah, we can't see a picture of that. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Let's see. Hold on. <coughs> oh, you know why it says. <coughs> it says sharing. Hold on. <coughs> there it is. Oh, it. I can't get it to show. All right. Okay. Never mind. I was trying to show the biological growth. Okay. You can see this screen, right? Yeah. Okay. I'll have to, I'll have to <clears throat> figure out how to uh, share those pictures later on. <laughs> Somebody else trying to come in? Hold on. Oh. Jenner and Gavin.
Okay, more people coming in. Yeah, that, that's me. I'm uh, getting trouble with the audio earlier, so. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. Got him. Hey, so certain solids increase silt, sand, grease, bacteria, algae, oil, and corrosion. Causes solids to affect the transfer. Okay. Here's uh, ways to test pH with litmus paper, with red and blue litmus paper, which changes color up, and you put it up against the scale. Okay, pH test papers, which you also use a scale. See this little drawing, this little color scale here? That tells you what pH is. There's a dye, and then you can get an electronic pH meter, which I don't see here. Okay. They always tell you right where required PPE, face shield, gloves, and, uh, and goggles. Uh, well, this is basically tell you how to do it. We're going to get into this pH testing later when we do the practical side. Okay. Okay, always hold them. Always hold them. Give them to me. Fill your ear. Okay. <laughs> Mechanical water treatment equipment. Okay, you're going to be able to identify different. Oh, who's doing that? We're going to identify different types of water treatment, I, identify I, I filtration devices, and water. I, okay. Filtration. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it was earlier. I sent you a oh. message. That's earlier. Okay. <sighs> Background, background noise. Okay, water filtration equipment, uh, cartridge filters, which are changed. Water filtration equipment, you can manually, manually clean, right? And these, you just buy new cartridges and change them. Oh, and then filter tanks. That media was just cleaned by backwashing. Okay, this is a... Uh, this is a filter where you you do backwash to clear it out once you once you uh, call a multimedia filter. And there's here's different types of filters. You have them for uh, water treatment. Oh, I didn't do that. I don't, I don't have a lot of faith in these centrifugal separators. Um, I don't think you need some kind of chemical treatment. They they said these centrifugal separators. You don't have to use some of the the um, chemical, uh, but I don't know if it's been proven yet. <laughs> what, what the heck is that? Okay, <clears throat> this is basically an evaporator. <clears throat> Basically showing, what's this showing here? Oh. Steam and it condenses the treated water. So it gives me, this is evaporating, give me pure water, it looks like, from steam. Hmm. Interesting. This is a water softener system on the left that uses salt. Uh, they use the same type for um, uh, Oh, who's that? Okay, and this other one. What's that? Is that the same they use in the boiler? This one? Yeah. Good question. I'm not going to use brine for a boiler. Oh, I'm stalling like that, and then uh, we treat the water that goes to the 
to the uh, heat pump. Oh, okay. We have, a, we have a jacuzzi and yeah. I know. I know they use a salt type uh, one for pool for adding chlorine to a pool. Yeah. Um. This one is the ion exchanger, where untreated water comes to the top and treated water comes out the bottom. Okay, this is a deaerator. This basically gets air out of a system, air out of uh, air out of the, and this is for a boiler. It's actually deaerator, deaerator. Oh, sorry. Okay. Automatic. Hey. Automatic chemical feed systems, used on cooling towers. They use it on. Uh, they don't use the automatic one. They use a mechanical one. To go oh. on because it's closed. Anything closed system, you just add chemicals to it. But the automatic is for like um, any type of evaporative uh, cooling, like a cooling tower. Yeah, the only problem is what with uh, evaporative. You got to blow down the system, right? There's a. Uh, this is basically an automatic blowdown uh, <clears throat> system for a cooling tower. Okay. Blowdown separators. This is for a, mostly, mostly for a steam system. Separate steam from water and, and collect the sol dissolved solids. <coughs> And it uh, cools down the the steam, the water being blown down. Okay. System specific. No, this is boy. One years ago, no. Okay. Identify and describe how to access water tr treatment related problems occur. Okay. Hey. Hey. To describe how to identify and describe how to treat water related problems that occur in open recirculating water systems. To identify and describe how to treat water related problems that occur in closed systems and how to treat water problems that occur in steam systems. Um, we don't use a lot of steam heating. Okay. Inspect a cooling tower or steam boiler and it's really water pipes is for signs of water treatment problems. You can actually see um, problems in the system. Wait. Okay. You can see problems in the in the water system by looking look just doing a visual inspection. Like it's showing here a, a cooling tower on the left. <coughs> You'll see um, green algae growing, if they're not maintaining their chemical, um, maintaining their chemical treatment or doing blowdowns. Um, you'll see a lot of green in there. You'll see trees growing out of the top or the sides. Okay. Say we got calcium carbonate and calcium sulfate. We have another. We have a. We have a. And we have uh, in Hawaii. We have a lot of silicate because of the uh, volcanic rock. Okay. On the bottom here, number three. This. Oh, darn it. I did not do that. Things are changing by itself. <laughs> the bleed off, the bleed off down here in the bottom. Um, it's like a blow down. Okay. Silt deposits formed by airborne dirt entering the cooling tower and selling out the silt. It can cause restrict water flow, growth of microbes. It's, it's, it's a food supply. And uh, 
It's controlled by adding cup polymers and manucleal carbon, so you actually get in there and scrub it down. Okay. <clears throat> Biological growth. It just, you got all kinds of spores growing around. Hey. <laughs> I'm touching my mouth. Mouse. Okay. <clears throat> Effective algae and slimes on HVAC system performance. Algae and slimes get into all your, they block passages, water flow passages, so it reduces heat transfer area. Okay. We have the chemical to control algae. Okay. Salt oxygen is, is a, big, um, a big problem in boiler systems. Not really that much in um, in chill water systems. And we don't see a lot of boiler in air conditioning here. You have a little bit of boiler heating, right? Or heating or hot water. <coughs> um, Corrosion control, use chromates and hydrazine, sodium nitrate, nitrum based, nitrite based mixture. Okay. Nitrites are used in chill water systems. Okay. Scale deposits in hot water systems results from real high temperatures and pH. So you can be, re be reduced by avo avoiding water with high pH. Most water that we get is about seven, you know, right around the seven, 7.5 coming in, uh, regular water. Uh -huh. um. <laughs> steam systems, they're still talking about steam systems. Uh, pitting, grooving, embrittlement. The causes for corrosion, acidic feed water dissolves oxygen and other gases. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to talk a lot about boilers. <clears throat> um, boilers you use a lot of sodium carbonate and phosphates for a chemical. It's a chemical additive. Um, use a colloidal colloidal substance which are substances that makes the um, the uh, suspended solids uh, fluid so you can blow it down in a um, when you blow do your blow downs okay and addition of polymers actually makes it flow better and doesn't uh, adhere to surfaces that's what the polymers on the bottom there is um, okay Sludge, for, sludge formation is actually happens in dead areas of a of a of a heat exchanger or a, a boiler, and um, blowdowns help that, and then mechanical cleaning also helps that. Okay, and basically it's down here in the bottom what I just said. <laughs> Foaming, okay, priming. Wow, we a lot of boiler water here. Okay, use chemicals to prevent type of use steam separator and fall base K. Maximal sop, total solids. If it's zero to 300 pounds, it's 3,500. <clears throat> um, suspended solids, 300. Then you got all the way up to 1,540. <clears throat> so the higher the pressure, the lower your Suspended solids and total solids. <clears throat> okay. Um, basically, they treat the makeup water goes into a boiler um, and they do blowdowns to control total dissolved solids. Okay. They usually have a, um, <clears throat> they usually have an automatic control on that. Okay. Surface blowdown skimming. Let's skip that. <laughs> okay, on this first one, some water temperature in an open recircling water system is 12 degrees greater than the wet bulb. Some slime is visible and some pump screen. 
system pump show, is there a problem? Yes. That is a problem. pH make a bottle for closed recirculate is, is increased. He tries to systematic decrease. Okay. Is there a problem? Yes, you're building up scale. And boiler temperature steam system has increased. Boiler RPH is 10. Slightly elevates total solids, but is there a problem? Yes. Oh. Hold on a second. They don't show any pictures of uh, the actual pH meter. Okay, hold on a second. Here, that goes down. Let me switch. Building management, indoor air quality. Okay. Oops. Share. Oh, maybe that's it. There's the algae. Can you guys see this? Yeah. All right. So I actually, up in this top picture, I've seen cooling towers like this. <laughs> I see them like this here in the middle. And I've definitely seen this here. And that last one, these two. These right here on the bottom are like these fins right here going through the cooling tower. It's all these the media. So when they get really clogged like this, you have really poor heat transfer in the cooling tower. Your chiller plant suffers, yeah. Same thing with this algae down here. This is all algae grew, grew in there. And, it, and, and actually... Some of these actually grow trees out. I've seen trees growing out of this stuff. But, oh, good. I got to share it. Okay. Uh, that's share. all from here? Huh? Is that all from here? This is, Those I pictures? got it off the internet. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Back to, hold on a second. Close this. Let me share my other one. Okay. Let's go back to indoor air quality. Hey, any, any questions on chemistry control? I'm going to share this. Let's see here. Share screen. I think I'm getting the hang of it. Slide show. Okay, indoor, indoor air quality, everybody's favorite subject. Oh, we didn't get everybody on, let's see here. I wonder where Carlo is. Okay, indoor air quality. Oh, why is it not working? <clears throat> big, big problem in buildings. Um, we have a lot of, uh, my building's older. So uh, when we talk about indoor air quality, we, our tenants, my tenants uh, basically come up and say, oh, we smell, we smell a sewer smell or a burning smell. Um, <clears throat> What we found is um, the sewer smell is from a broken vent pipe or something that has a crack on it. Sometimes it's on the top and sometimes it's hidden. You can't find it. <clears throat> so indoor air quality has to be addressed. Um, uh, <clears throat> let's see here.
Hold on a second. Okay. First thing they, they talk about is famous I, IQ. Um, this one here had mold and toxic fibers in the air. Uh, circulating through your body, making employees sick, exposing public to sick health hazards. They traced it to a flooding cleanup from two hurricanes in 2005, and this was actually seven years later. Okay, made 19 lawsuits. Okay, is this a sick building? Is this a high back problem? Uh, all these are problems. Indoor air quality is portion of a larger issue known as indoor environmental quality. Ooh. Okay. Indoor environmental quality encompasses all elements of an indoor environment. Okay. That includes your air conditioning, your fresh air, um, and then they also talk about IEQ considers where they're sitting and sound levels in their areas where they're working. Okay. And basically, they're, they're saying here, uh, current building philosophy leads towards the understanding the IEQ. IEQ, IEQ problems are far less easier, far easier, less expensive to prevent in the construction phase. <clears throat> okay. If you have an older building, that's it's actually an issue. Okay. Uh, because then you need to find out what the problem is, and then you need to go solve it. And sometimes it's not easier, uh, not as easy to solve in an older building. Okay. <clears throat> and basically, they're saying here HVAC technicians need to be state current on the federal, state, and local standards. Um, important to keep in mind the ASHRAE IAQ standard. Okay. Air in which there's no known contaminants at a harmful concentration are de as determined by. Consequent authorities and which substantial majority or 80% or more. So 80% or more is the is their is ASHRAE's um, standard by which if love if 80% of the people are happy, then then you're good with your indoor air, air quality. Okay. Um <clears throat> okay, first thing is radon. Uh, I I learned about that. Oh, about this in the Navy uh, uh, since I worked on something. Yes. Is this recording? Like, are you guys recording? Yes. Okay, okay. No, I was wondering, I was setting this, so I wasn't sure if it was a meal. Okay. <laughs> yes, we're recording. We're recording it. All right. Um, radon is a source that's natural. It's a natural, actual um, uh, byproduct of, 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 um, that background radiation. Some places you have high, higher radion, rate, background radon than other places. And it tells you the percentages here, radon throw around 37%. There's industrial occupational consumer products is 2%. Nuclear medicine is 12% because they, in nuclear medicine, they actually um, take a uh, radiation source and, and um, and direct the radiation rays at a certain particular part of your body to try and kill some cancer cells. And then they have medical procedures, uh, which includes, I believe, x-rays as another source of radi radiation. There's internal, there's from the soil, and there's cosmic from space. So solar flares and all that is basically what they're talking about, radiation exposure. <coughs> um, in the Navy nuclear power field, they actually say your exposure that you get from the Navy nuclear power program, the U.S. Navy that is, is less than if you were stay stayed outside in the in the sun for most of your life. You actually get less radiation exposure being being exposed to a operating nuclear power plant. That's how safe they made them. So the U.S. Navy. I think has the best 
radiation protection program in the world. Um, <clears throat> the Russians don't. The Russians don't protect their people. <clears throat> they had a lot of um, uh, submariners and nuclear nuclear operators that actually got cancer in their 40s and earlier <clears throat> due to radiation exposure. Huh, they got a quiz already. <laughs> IQ addresses. Well, <clears throat> it's definitely not seeding ergonomics. It's not in wall, wall and seeding colors. <clears throat> and it's not surface colors and texture, so it's actually C. It addresses thermal comfort and breast ventilation air. There you go. And what I say, it's considered acceptable at least what percent? Well, it's not 70, not 50, it's 80. Okay. Sources of building contaminants. I know one. Why don't you guys help me out? Tell me what sources of building contaminants are. <coughs> um, I know one from construction. It's um, new carpet puts off a older. Another one from construction is paints, right? The off-gassing of paints. That's why they they uh, try to lower the VOC and the um, the odor coming off of it. Um, and B, human occupancy also affects IQ because the more people you put in there, the more CO two they're putting out. So it needs, it needs more fresh air that you have to have to get to maintain your your IAQ standards. Okay. External sources. Um, how to conduct the IAQ survey. Describe air sampling process. Ooh. So on this last one here, number E, we try to, uh, at my building, we actually call someone in to do a survey <coughs> if we're having a big, real big problem with a, um, uh, in like a, if somebody says it's mold, we need to prove, we can't call it mold, right? Um, because a lot of, there's a lot of um, issues when people call things mold. Um, you actually need to get tested to make sure that it is mold because it could be mildew or, or something else. And now and there's a lot of molds out there, and not not all of them are, are hazardous to your health. Okay. Um, you should have an indoor air quality program for your building, and basically has a form in there that you go in and you take a survey, and you go around and ask tenants um, of a per particular area if they're all feeling this this issue, they're all smelling the smell or they, they, they think there's a mold problem or, a, or an air conditioning problem. Uh, you need to have it all that recorded down. <clears throat> and then, then you call in the specialist for these um, CO2 detector and, and uh, air sampling devices. Okay. Uh, I talked about this already. HVAC, oh, hey. This shows uh, sources of indoor pollutants. Of course, building construction, materials and furnishings. Oh, sorry about that. HVAC, other buildings, cleaning components, and pesticides, human oxygen, contaminant sources located outside the building. Uh, we had an issue with this at my building where they were filming um, uh, Hawaii Five-0 and they set a generator outside of our fresh air vent and they had the generator exhaust coming right in the building. 
uh, Rory had to tell him to move. <laughs> the guy didn't want to move. He said, "Oh, my chief doesn't. My chief, he, my chief doesn't want me to move it." And he says, "Well, you got to move it away because it's right next to the fresh air supply to our building." That was crazy. Okay. Uh, from new construction. <clears throat> Let's talk about a. Uh, they're, they're they're making. The standards tighter over the last 20 years, um, where they have less um, uh, less air intrusion from outside on the homes and buildings. <coughs> um, oh, and getting rid of natural ventilation, which allows see, and then so they have um, so they actually built in supply and return fans, filtration systems or outdoor air. Um, uh, okay, now we're talking about the carpet, new building smell. It's like a new car smell. New carpet furniture can produce VLCs and process known as off-gassing, okay. Um, talks about back in when I was in in the when I first joined the Navy, I I dealt with this asbestos issue, um, and we had to watch out. We had to watch out for asbestos and and even old buildings um, that got renovated had asbestos issues because they still had asbestos insulation, or it was in the building materials like the tiles ceiling tiles and floor tiles. So any of the older buildings, like my building was built in the 60s, has some asbestos, but we, we don't we got lucky because they only have a little bit. We didn't have a lot. But to prove you have to have asbestos, you have to be tested, right? You have to go get a professional test tester to, to come in and, and analyze your uh, building materials. <clears throat> okay, it talks about ozone can irritate you. It talks about the limit for ozone, 0 0.1 ppm in eight hours. Um, NIOSH recommends the upper limit of 0.1 ppm not to exceed at any time. And the EPA recommends a maximum average of 0 0.08. So there's different standards for different. Um, organizations okay negative building pressure uh, we actually have a I think my building's positive pressure and uh, that keeps things from coming seeping in from the outside and then we have a um, exhaust vent that exhausts our exhaust from the restrooms and stuff um, it's talking about heat heat exchangers, where small cracks in heat exchangers expand when heated, allowing byproducts to mix with the airstream and vent blockage ooh, and vent blockages. And this is talking about for like a boiler vent or a um, chimney vent. If somebody blocks blocks the vent off, then the then that whatever's burning gets into the building. CO2, people naturally breathe out CO2. Okay, we're talking about the human factory. We're talking about uh, just like our COVID thing right now, bacteria and viruses, uh, chemicals from your personal care products or whatever you're eating, uh, body or skin particles. Oh, somebody come oh, somebody came in. Carlo, welcome to the meeting, Carlo. Hi, Carlo. Carlo's here. Where are you at, Carlo? 
Like Good drop. job. <laughs> There's Carlo. Oh, I like your background, Pat. Yeah. I just bought my job. Now I gotta eat. I never eat lunch, bro. Oh my goodness. I gotta go eat. <laughs> what when you gotta work too much? You forget to eat. <laughs> you can't do that. Okay, we're on. We're on indoor air quality, Carl. We already went through. Um, we already looked at um, chem, uh, water sampling. Where's everybody at? I'm gonna get for a bus. No, there's twelve in the room. So Keith is up here. Keith is up. Okay. Listening. Oh. Let's see what my thing. I like my other jobs right there. <laughs> okay. Sources of out, out there, outdoor air pollutants. Okay. It shows you the thing here. Uh, largest one is industrial emissions. Electric power plants, wood burning. <laughs> okay. okay. They can be controlled by your outside air intakes. Sources of radon. We don't have to worry that too much about it. Why? This is more like the mainland. Um, they worry about radon, uh, especially in basements. It comes through cracks in the, the basement. But we really don't worry about that here. Um, okay. Now they're talking about passive radon testing. Um, uh, <coughs> They have detectors that actually they put in buildings and um, that actually measures the radon um, concentration. And this, talk, this is basically telling you how to do a test. I don't think we ever done, I've ever done one here in Hawaii. Okay. And the, basically this is, this is a, how you, um, uh, perform an IAQ survey. You first you write down the problem description, uh, i.e., um, offensive odor. Okay, then you go to the space, do a visit and, and a walkthrough. Okay, and write down what you physically see. Then you do a oh, then you do a uh, air conditioning and ventilation system inspection, and then you call in an outside vendor to do air sampling because usually most people don't have a uh, someone that can do air sampling on, on at the building. That's more of a specialized field. <clears throat> and then they send, they send the results out, takes a few weeks, you get the results back and they say, okay, it's this. And um, sometimes, it, most times it comes back and from what I've seen, uh, they have negative um, or no negative um, they usually don't find anything. Um, okay. Conditions to consider when you're doing a to doing a um, inspection. Uh, how tight your building construction is, your ventilation rates, um, rooms properly are configured, wherever the space uh, separations between activities control temperature, air movement, odors. Um, Recent addition of partition or firewalls and reuse natural ventilation. Those are different factors you need to look at. Okay. Windows and doors, if they're sealed or not. Um, building materials in the building, insulation. Uh, if they've done any recent painting or caulks or sealants, uh, any new door, new openings to the building, and of course, new furnishing carpeting. This talks about the checking the HVAC system. Um, humidifier reservoirs, because they, they can actually build up algae and, and mold, mildew. Condensate pads and traps, same thing. <coughs> Duck liner, insulation condition. Um, condition of the internal surfaces, dampers, actuary linkages, inoperative fans or blowers. You get a fan that's not working, that could cause a problem. And material stored inside the air had equipment. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. 
Here's the different air sampling devices. Um, and monitors. Here's a portable CO2 tester. When they do CO2 sampling, you're basically monitoring the health of a building. It's done when the building, and they typically do it when the building's fully occupied, then when it's occupied, so you can compare between the two readings. And then you have to measure temperature and humidity uh, because that affects your sample. Okay. Of course, they're done by qualified personnel. Uh, Results can be inconclusive depending on timing, and and they do surface sampling with like a sticky sampling thing to get a something on the surface. Okay, off gassing. <laughs> okay. Associated with the following contaminants. Okay, mold spores, no. Nope. It's down here at the bottom. D, volatile organic compounds, VOCs, that's what they talked about earlier. Where's the COVID-19? COVID-19, we talked about that earlier. That's part of the human, that's part of the human element to indoor air quality. It was right next to body odor. <laughs> okay. Occupants ability affect IQ by consuming oxygen and exhaling. Well, it's not ammonia, it's not nitrile oxide, it's not carbon monoxide, it's carbon dioxide, CO2. You breathe in oxygen, breathe out CO2. And plants love CO2, right? Because they take CO2 in and, breathe, and breathe, let, let go of oxygen. Which is following a source of radioactive air pollution. Not not that common in Hawaii, but it's radon. <clears throat> we don't have a lot of radon here. <laughs> That's mostly uh, continental United States. Okay. Uh, IAQ inspection team should include, at a minimum, HVAC engineer and I would say industrial hygienist. because uh, I don't think any of those apply. I got it right. Okay. Take a complete picture. Building air quality, CO2 CO2 includes those taken at night when it's unoccupied. C. That gives you a <clears throat> Okay, true or false. Radon accounts for more human exposure to radiation. That, that's true. EPA recommends that undamaged asbestos materials be left alone if they're not like that is true too. Tighter construction of newer buildings eliminates problems that allow pollutants to accumulate. That's not, that's neither true or false because um, <clears throat> you can have a lot of off gassing from and VOC depending on what they used. Formaldehyde is most common VOC. Good question. Don't know that one. Evaporator coolers and condensers provide breeding. Yes. Only non-fuel oil com combustion produces nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide. Completion of formal OSHA checklist is this last step. Examination of ventilation system during building IQ special ventilation begin at the outside air intake. Okay. Here we go. True, true, false. Oh, I was right on the third one. Okay, false. Okay. Explain how acceptable IQ can be can be achieved. A, explain how a building and design can affect, yes. 
how ventilation temperature and humidity control IQ and how to control chemical and micro, okay. Microbial contaminants, okay. Perform a building indoor air quality inspection. <laughs> That's basically, they're talking about design here in the first one. Locate the building on a hill rather than a valley. Okay. Consider traffic and prevailing wind. Carefully select HVAC equipment. Okay, that's true. Use materials that produce minimal VLCs to consider outside air duct locations carefully. That's very true. Okay, ensure, combust ensure combustion appliances operate properly. Provide proper drainage and seal foundations. Re use radon resistant construction, not, not really in Hawaii. Avoid use of shrubs and trees that produce heavy pollen. Uh, provide adequate HVAC system access, lighting. This last one we all know is a problem in buildings. That's the last thing to look at is where they put the equipment. Ventilation control. Okay. Close or obstructed air outlets or diffusers, outdoor dampers operating properly. Supply. I, I actually saw one building where the outdoor air had outdoor dampers were frozen in the shut position. Rusted, actually shut. Supply or exhaust fans are inoperative. I've seen that too. And dirty air filters. Oh, I definitely see that. Okay. Chemical contaminants. Uh, use local exhaust systems. Okay. Areas being remodeled, paint or carpeted should be temporarily isolated. Okay. From other occupied areas of the building. We should try to do that when they do construction. Apply pesticides devices only when the building is unoccupied. Yep, ventilate building before it's reoccupied. That's true. Apply solvents and cleaning products strictly. And <clears throat> that's very, very true. Ensure outside air intakes or openings are not located close to places where emissions collect. Okay. Microbial growth. Okay. This top one is that between 30 and 60% is actually a good rule of thumb. Rule of thumb. Um, I've, all, I've also heard 50 and 60% too. It's more strict um, control of your humidity. Make sure cooling coals are operated at low enough temperatures, provide to you property to humidify, yes. Install these fans in kitchens and bathrooms, yes. And ensure humidifiers, filters, and sump pumps are clean. Oh, that's very true. Okay, detect and repair water leaks, prevent and correct any causes of stagnant water, yes. Um, if contamination occurred in plenum or ductwork, don't from heat exchanger, add filtering. <clears throat> that's that's actually a challenge. That'd be a challenge trying to putting a filter in. Some sometimes on ductwork. Uh, clean and disinfect surfaces, and replace any porous water damaged furnishings. Okay. Question: In the initial design of building, energy conservation must be achieved in a way that also provides. I would say. An acceptable indoor air quality. Oh, one of the best methods. Hey, currently used correct problems caused by poor IQ's use of additional outdoor ventilation. <laughs> I think that was the answer. <laughs> when a plus side building, you should cover exhaust. Nope. The right. Nope. Sorry, ventilate building towards rock. But yes. Got to be C. Okay. Hold on a second. Oh. 
indoor air quality equipment. Okay, should be able to identify IAQ equipment. Okay, identify, describe HVAC equipment and devices used to improve IAQ. Explain how air distribution system can contribute to poor IQ and how these can be addressed. Liability HVAC contractors may accept by servicing HVAC systems. You use the manufacturer's humidifier capacity chart to find humidifier capacity needed for various building types and sizes. True. Okay. Building management systems. I have a building management system in my building called the Allerton system. Uh, automates my air conditioning. <coughs> That's a real helpful tool for adjusting temperature and, and uh, air flows. Okay. Modular air, air equipment. They didn't have this back in the day. Most equipment in a building was installed and it was, it was made to last for many, many years and just be rebuilt. Now you have modular systems and even the, even the US Navy is going to modular on their ships because they can take a whole module out and just replace it instead of uh, working on the equipment. It's a more effective way of doing maintenance. Um, I forgot what's the, what's the air conditioning. Um, they have some air conditioning that replaces chillers that's modular. Um, this one thing we talked about um, filtering filter equipment. Um, for the COVID-19, did, did you guys, um, did they say, did they say, tell you guys anything about filtration for your buildings? Anybody? No? Um, my, our, um, corporate company is in California and they're asking us to put a higher MERV filter because we're using MERV 8. Uh, filters on our air conditioning equipment. They want to go up to MERV 13, 13 or 14. Um, the only problem is that it really increases your cost of your filters. So a MERV, I think a MERV 8 filter can cost anywhere between five and ten dollars, and a MERV 13 cost is. Forty, fifty dollars. <laughs> it's anywhere between four, four to eight times the cost of a regular filter. So, say it costs us five thousand dollars a year, or five thousand uh, dollars every six months to change filters in our building. Uh, when we went to the higher MERV filters, it's now it's going to cost us twenty five thousand. It's going to cost us five times more. <laughs> So it's gonna be about fifty thousand dollars a year just to change our filter, increase our filter uh, efficiency. You guys gotta follow that. Well, um, that's what I'm thinking about, and that's up to our corporate office what they want to spend for filters. But our other other concern is when you increase your um, efficiency of filter restriction, it causes more restriction, right? And and what we're worried about is carryover. And you gotta change more um, often now. Yeah, which means you have to change more often, which is means it's gonna be more expensive. So it could be, could be instead of 50,000 a year, it could be $100,000 a year. So and the location, yeah, uh, if it gets dusty all the time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we just did only two floors, I think, of the MERV 13s. So here's your, mechanical filters. I've seen all these filters in my building. They have, we have a, 
the bottom ones here, the eight, eight HEPA and the bag filter, they have it on the um, uh, one of the uh, exhaust fans for one of our restaurants. But these things are expensive. Fresh air? Huh? Fresh air exhaust fan? It's a exhaust fan for the grease, for the oh, hood, wow. grease hood. So it oh, actually wow. has, a, has a bag filter and the AC HEPA filter in it. It's crazy. And we don't have to change it. It's actually up to the tenant. The tenant has to pay for it. Mm -hmm. But that's good. We don't have to take care of it. Uh, hey, Pat, electronic air, yeah, electronic air filters. Pat. Yes. You know the the HIPAA filters that doesn't yes. uh, filter the COVID nineteen. Yes. So that's HIPAA, not enough HIPAA for filters. Do the HIPAA so filters. still want you to um, upgrade to that, that new filter? We don't have well the HEPA filter the one I'm I'm showing here only is only in an exhaust fan for a restaurant grease uh, that exhausts it out of the building. Medical, yeah. Yeah, we don't have any HEPA filters in the building. Most of all, most of our filters for our air handlers are all are all Merv eight right now. And that's higher than the HEPA filters. No, Merv eight's less than the HEPA filter. Uh, HEPA filter is a high efficiency filter. So more medical, medical buildings. So it's more like medical. Yeah, you see it in um, uh, operating rooms where they have okay. a they have a filter wall in the operating room, and now that filter room wall. I mean, the whole wall is filters, and it's HEPA filters. Mm. Okay. And they also have HEPA filters going in because they don't want any dust going into the operating room, right? Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Um, I've seen both of them. I've seen the operating room filtration system. Okay. Um, and and uh, it's very, very restricted because the one we had, yeah, they did open heart surgeries, so they don't want a lot of stuff coming in, right? Electrostatic filters, electronic air filters. You'll notice these because they'll have a they'll have an electric supply on the outside. Uh, it's drawing on the left um, that puts an electrostatic charge in it, and the charged particles get attracted to that. And it's 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 a whole bunch of um, See a whole bunch of different rows of um, different filters. It's, you got a large pre filter, then you got then you got a smaller part which which gets to the electric shock, and then you have a carbon filter, which the carbon filter takes away odors, yeah. Okay. Uh, if you look here at this optimum zone, is that between that thirty and sixty percent, that's where a lot of this Bacteria, viruses, fun, fungi, mites, they're very low in this optimum zone of 30 to, if you look at 50 to 60%, it's that even more restrictive. So that's why they pick the 50 to 60% usually for indoor, indoor air quality. But they actually, if you, it actually tells you 30 to 60, it should be safer uh, as far as indoor air, air hum, indoor Humidity. Okay. Building construction have significant on on required humidifier capacity. Okay. Size of residence to so your size by and what your humidification required. Uh, loose average and tells you all the construction materials. Loose is basically. A shack, no weather stripping, no no vapor barrier, no fireplace damper. <laughs> oh, darn it. Okay. And the tight one would be rust stripping, infiltration barrier, seams of penetrating seal, fireplace damper, dampered exhaust, tuck work taped. Hey, stop doing that. Okay, duck work taped or conditioned space and outdoor combustion air. Okay, UV lights. This is a new thing, right? New UV lights. They've been around for the last 10 years. <clears throat> the only thing I know about UV lights negative is you, you shouldn't be using it in a plastic environment like a air handler that's plastic. Um, 
has plastic inside like a mini split because it weakens the plastic. Um, also, UV light's not good if you look at it directly, right? So you need to have it turned off when you're servicing it. Okay. And another thing about UV light, it only treats what the light shines on, right? It only treats what the light shines on. So <clears throat> if you're, all the areas of your, say where you put it, um, you have a corner goes around that you don't have a UV light there, it's not gonna catch that. That, it's not gonna irradiate that. Pat. Yes, <laughs> question. Um, yeah, is it true that um, they're using the plasma right now? They're using plasma, yes. Yeah, instead of the UV and, light. And they're using uh, another one called um, ion. There's one another one called ion. Um, and it basically puts ions in the air. And uh, I don't know how effective it is. I know the ion though, hardly needs any maintenance. Because you know, UV lights are only good for one year to two years. And then you gotta change them. They burn out, okay. and and they cost anywhere between thirty to hundred dollars a piece, depending on the size. Yeah. So that's that's one thing about UV lights. Um, the ion and the and the uh, plasma one, I think, have very low maintenance. I'll have to look into that. But <laughs> if that. Yes, they're they're installing um, UV light tubes in uh, split units, yeah, and uh, in, in many splits or no, in in I mean uh, centrals for homes. I don't know mini splits on the indoor units. They're yes, in, they're installing the bulbs inside the indoor unit for where it supplies, yeah. Yep, and I'm worried about the effect of it on plastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I'm hoping that 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 um, they perfected the plastic that keeps that plastic from getting brittle with that UV light. Because um, right. what I learned before is UV lights um, really hurt the plastic. Mm -hmm. Any of the plastic, then that all oh, mini splits are all plastic. Yeah. I know they sell them. They're selling them for mini splits now. These UV lights. I've seen them in the store. <laughs> seen them in the AC stores. Mm -hmm. So maybe they got maybe they got better, and uh, and have the uh, the plastics are UV protected. Um, if you look in a lot of homes uh, that were built in Eva Beach, and they put in the new air conditioning, and um, they have UV lights in them. But almost every one that's over a year old, people don't know that they need to change their light bulbs, right? Because they don't go up in the attic and they don't check on their UV lights. And, and uh, you know, they'll let it go for five years. The light's out for four years. And by the time they get mm -hmm. to change the light bulb, the ballast has already gone bad. So I noticed that a lot. And those things are costly. I think they're like, Two to three hundred dollars wow. for this the ones you see right here on the screen two to three hundred dollars so that's the thing about them they're costly uh effective duct leak location leaks in return oh yeah let's talk about in air quality anytime you have duct leaks you have So let's talk about the return leak, and then now we're talking about the supply duct leak. And this is a, this is definitely not a uh, Hawaii house because it's uh, showing a furnace, and these are all floor vents. And they're talking about leak, air leakage because it's a negative pressure space. Okay, air also see. Oh my goodness.
So we're basically doing an aerosol sealing from the inside. Wow. This is interesting. I've never seen this. Anybody seen this? I've never seen this. <clears throat> I've seen this. We actually have one at Topa. Has a vacuum cleaner up here, has your brushes, and it has the whip. And basically, you go down the duct, and these brushes and the get all loose um, dust off and it gets sucked into this vacuum cleaner. There it is. Power brush method. Air washing. <laughs> okay. I don't know a lot of HVAC contractors that do cleaning of ducts. It's usually a specialty company. It's a duct cleaning company. It's more specialized because you have to have a whole bunch of specialized equipment. And I know we don't, I don't have a heap of vacuum. Um, as far as we're, <clears throat> uh, Okay, best practice, emphasize importance of IQ to building owners, okay. Uh, anything you give to the owner should be in writing. Uh, and the special dirt equipment and system upgrades. Okay, which of the following is used to control and monitor the ventilation of air in a building? Sub slab depressurization. Total intake, infrared exhaust, automated building management system. <laughs> Which of the following like the result in cross space be drawing the HVAC? Or cross space or be drawn? I'd say or cross space return air duct leak. Yep. Also, it's brought by building contracts and other HVAC contractors should. Avoid addressing, nope, yeah. I was just gonna say that, educate building owners, customers, code requirements. Okay. So we're done with that one. All right, now. Let me. Hold on a second. <laughs> From Brandon, everybody should move their answers back and speak. <laughs> oh, Keith left us. Oh, what happened? Get out of there. Keith said he has another meeting to go to. <laughs> Okay, we're done with indoor air quality. Let's, how the heck do I, let's see. Hold on a second. Uh, I just saw the, I just saw Gavin texting me. Yeah. You guys recording. But as a while ago, well, uh, oh, Gavin, <laughs> he already asked me that yeah. because I got a new laptop, so I was trying to see if if mine's recording, yeah. So I, I should always see how I, how I work this, <laughs> yeah. Everything upgrading, so good, good with these payment, huh? Yep, <laughs> yep, because the money's coming in. Well, oh, Gavin, day. Gavin, are you back to work? No, we all you're, you're off too. Into August, then postponed to August again. It was wow. was uh, this. Next month, then, like three days ago, I guess, uh, from our um, uh, stewardess, he told us next month, August, I guess. Oh. Or so I, I think so. It's going to continue as long as management wants to. 
Yeah, because my building, the management, the people in the management office uh, haven't been back to work since March. <laughs> yeah, but if they give us another 600, then I collect for the next month, August, oh, but yeah. if not, I'm going to apply for the poor. But you guys are doing, you guys, you guys are getting good money with um, unemployment, right? Fuck, I know. My bo- oh. So. Come on, I need more money back. <laughs> so, Jose, you guys see this? Oh. You guys see this? Yeah, for sale. All right. That's my new truck. Oh, what happened to now the? You know, now you know who get the money. <laughs> what happened to the Jeep? My Jeep, I sell it to my daughter. Oh, okay. Oh, See, you I like you got... like the Filipino color, yeah? <laughs> this is a this is a it's a Larry it's loaded too, though. Fully loaded, four by four, four by four. Um, lariat, so it's all leather interior, and then I put my uh, stickers on it. Where is it at? I had to put my stickers on it. See. Oh, oh right. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Sean. <laughs> That's a Ranger. That's the Ranger. How come you don't buy the, the full Ranger, size? Ranger. I have. A, I already have my F one fifty. So, so I I wanted to get a Ranger, and um, I'm having my. Uh, I got the bed coating is included, so I got to go to Pomalu and get that done, Monday, and then I ordered the. Um, um, the bed cover from the from Ford. So yeah, that's my that's my truck. Oh, Crusader is a kind of Where to put temper on it? Huh? Put temper. <laughs> There's the inside, all leather. I put these in. <laughs> oh, loaded, fully loaded. Oh yeah, this thing is fully oh, you just loaded. Just put it back. Oh, this loaded. I just picked this up last week, one week ago today. I can go. It's hard. I do it foot back. That's a nice one. I love my truck, man. So, oh, no, you should put a flag on your truck. Huh? You should put that flag on your truck. No, no, no. Keep the Hawaiian flag. I got the Hawaiian, flag. Keep the Hawaiian flag. <laughs> keep the Hawaiian flag. Oh, true. I just drive it. I like it. <laughs> Where's up? Oh, Troy's here. Hi, Troy. How you doing? Not bad. Not bad. You still, you still working? working or you're in a, you're unemployed. You still working? Hardly working. Hardly working. Working and collecting. Working. <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> you know than the drill. More snails than Troy. Oh. That's my from my girlfriend. <laughs> COVID girlfriend. Let me see here. So bad. Are we still having this class tomorrow and um, Thursday? Tomorrow and Thursday, but we're yeah, we're not, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the review of the other ones tomorrow. Building okay. mad. Still okay. have two for tomorrow. Huh? Same time. Same time, five o'clock. Right. Couple hours. Couple you hours. Pick up my book, shit. Oh, do you have? You don't have your book, Carlo? No, not yet. Oh, well, that's why uh, Keith was asking. Me. Instructor. Yeah, Keith. Keith was asking everybody if they had the. Um, um, yeah, I gotta pick up mine. 
I don't have my <laughs> new instructor. Oh, okay. oh look at that newborn. How old? Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, you, you've been making babies in this pandemic, yeah? Oh, yeah. Busy. <laughs> what is? Eat and make babies. Go be nice. Hey, Troy, guarantee yeah. after nine months, another one coming out. <laughs> 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 yeah, how come I only have I only have one? I only have Brandon, Fell, Troy. What is that? And, and try, try try hit the arrow, get the arrow. Yeah, the arrow. It's eleven of us right now. Oh yeah, uh, there it is. Hillary. Oh, I never even saw the arrow. Oh, let me make it bigger. Yeah, everybody. Oh, that's why. Looks like everybody got older all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> Carlo, Carlo been busy, man. <laughs> hey, look, got headphones over here. I gotta find my headphones. So this this background is off my pictures. It's called a virtual background. Hey Pat, so how how are they, how are we gonna do the, the hands on? Uh, later on, when the UH allows us to go back to class, so we're, we're gonna just gonna do all the, the labs near the end of the course. That's what um, uh, we were talking about. Oh. So you guys aren't gonna see Mike for a while because Mike's in um, Maine. So it's going to be just me and Rory. Um, I believe Rory's starting to teach next week, I think. But we're going to be swapping back and forth, and we're going to do this Zoom thing. Uh, so we're going to do this Zoom the same way as we do our classes. <coughs> um, except we're only going to do it, I think, Tuesday and Wednesday. The so one course, and then I'm trying to figure out if they're going to go – Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like we used to do, or if they just do Tuesday, Wednesday, and do go to and they go to the next week. Tuesday, Wednesday, so okay. They haven't figured that. They haven't figured that out yet. I don't think. They didn't catch it Tuesday. Should catch it on Wednesday. What's that? I suggest Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. Because that's all I got time for to do the review. Is today, tomorrow, and then we'll be done with the review. Um, just Wednesday only. This Wednesday only. I want to for those who didn't catch it. Yeah. Um, uh, I never, I never left work. So, uh, but at work, we, we all I do is sit, sit at the computer all day. <laughs> because the tennis, the tennis don't want us in their suites. It's kind of, it's kind of weird. <laughs> so, so we've been doing only emergency calls. And, and little calls for, so it's been really interesting. Uh -oh. Oh, a, lot of you, a lot of you guys uh, aren't working, but you're you're doing good on unemployment, right? Everybody got unemployment, right? Well, last month, right, or the last two weeks? Uh, Except not me, me. I never not me. anything. What's that? I never received anything. Really? I get denied. I know Mike. I think Mike is getting um, because even Mike got laid off. Yeah, Mike. Mike's collecting too. Yeah, he's collecting twelve hundred dollars a week. I'm I'm hoping Carlo will. Yeah, uh, Carlo. He what? Carlo to lend me big bucks. <laughs> hey, you got your puppy down there. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like Fell's outside, man. We gotta take advantage because after this, we cannot collect anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gavin's outside too. You're outside your house, huh, yeah. Gavin? I was outside all day, freaking with, the, with my kids. <laughs> get the pressure. Oh. Yeah, the family inside the house. Is that what they said? We're gonna be back in August? 
Is that what they're thinking or planning? That's what that's what the plan is right now. Because that's when UH is going back, right? August. Yeah. UH, UH shut us all down for the rest of the year, for the rest of the semester. Said we can't have in classroom training. Until that's why we can't do any of the in classroom training. Oh. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, man. You want to do something to So anybody got any questions? Uh, so far, so good. So far, oh. so good. Yeah. Are you going to send us another email for the link, the meeting tomorrow? What's that? Are you going to send us another email for the Zoom meeting tomorrow? I can. I can. Or or is this is the same uh, user same ID? Link. Should be the same link. Should be the same link, yeah. Should yeah. be the same link. Okay. I got it in my email. Huh? You got, got it in my email, email, right? Yeah. I, yeah. We just missing some guys. Why aren't they the other guys? <laughs> so there's the two young boy only. Okay. Uh, Ronel. Mike. Ronel and yeah, Mike and Ronel. Mike and John. Mike. John and John. And John. And John. And uh, I don't know what happened to Dennis. Yeah. I think Dennis Scott. So when should we be done with this class, Pat? Like, huh? well, how many how many more months? Uh I think it's October. Mm -hmm. Our original finish date was October. But I think they extended to November now. But I think that's oh. for the that's for the um all the final testing and the um, um, what is that called? The Nate, the Nate certification testing. No, yeah, because uh, I told um, Keith was Simon for the electrician because like it's not looking too healthy for the hotel. I was freaking kind of kind of sketchy and scared on that shit. Oh yeah, I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to pass that shit and get it somehow, bro. <laughs> Fuck that. There's no option, Dan. I, I know. I know. Sean's been working a lot, huh, Sean? Yep. Yeah. I, I'm texting him. Kind of, I'm going to text him. Text him if he's still taking electrical. Yeah. I have, I have a friend at the VA, and they oh, said yeah. uh, he was working up at Tripler, and they put them all, um, they put them all on, <laughs> online to do their work, and now he's all virtual. He said, if we start now, if, if you roll over and we start now, we still can continue through through it. But yeah, so that's what they, they told me. So, you know, because uh -huh. I really, really, I, I really don't know how long this pandemic is going to happen. No, because I still not bottom on the list too. So, well, yeah, yeah, you guys are you guys are hurting because because the the tourists haven't come back yet. And it's gonna take it's gonna take like six months to a year before that to happen. It's terrible. I feel bad for you guys, for the hotel guys. Yeah, Jenner, I need some uh, answers if I go electrician. Electrician. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me. Remind me. Show me. Show me work. Remember the pencil. Pencil drop. Then that's the answer. What I need. Sean. Sean took his test, right? Sean. Yeah. Your electrical maintenance electrician or something. Yeah. But do all, somebody else took the test. So you me. got your life security, Sean. <laughs> Oh, Jeff did. No, it's me. Yeah, Pat. Huh? Me, I, 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 Jenner, I know Jenner was taking it. Yeah. No, I, 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 I thought uh, Jeff took it. Oh, I no, Rory test. told me. Rory told me Jeff took it. No, I didn't take an electrical test. He didn't? Okay. Uh, that, was Rory. that was Rory. He said, he said Sean and Jeff did. <laughs> I don't know where he got his information from. Yeah. Do, you yes. Do you need your working hours for which somebody to sign off? You can find online. A <laughs> <laughs> joking matter, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see what is real, what is not, so I can make my moves. Right. But yeah. Any other questions, guys? I think we're done. Yeah, I'm good. Let's go. Hey, when, when we're going to uh, bless the, the truck. 
when, <laughs> when we go back to class. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. Check the date, ba? Huh? Check the date for the blessing. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this Carlos Saturday. <laughs> This Saturday, we go bless him, Pat. Saturday. <laughs> uh, you bring a six-pack of Max. See? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow, then. All right. Okay. Hey, see everybody see you tomorrow. Me. All right. Get easy. Okay. Don't yeah. work too hard, man. Right? Yep. See you guys tomorrow right. evening. <laughs> See here. Stop recording. See you guys.